everyone. Um, my name is Catherine Haig. I am coming to you today from the Rocky Mountain Labs in Montana. Um, I'm very excited to be telling you about some of the work that we're doing. Our grant was called Regional Tropism of Sporadic CJD Subtypes in Human Brain Organoids. So what we really want to look at here is that we know during sporadic CJD, patients will present with different symptoms and also different disease durations. And they are often caused by the different subtypes, which we think are just really very small changes in the structure of the prions, the agent that causes disease. But those very small changes seem to allow this agent to attack different parts of the brain. And by attacking different parts of the brain, you get the different symptomology. So we want to really delve into how these different shapes attack the different parts of the brain and maybe even different cells within those different parts of the brain. Until recently, that hasn't really been possible because we need a model of live human brain tissue to do this. But a few years back in time, my lab developed this. And these are human cerebral organoids or human brain organoids. They're balls of brain tissue we grow in a dish. They can grow to about the size of a small pea. Um, we actually grow them from stem cells that we reprogram from people's skin. So it's very ethically appropriate. All of our donors have consented to us using their skin to make these little brain cultures. And we were able to show that we could infect them with sporadic CJD prions. So what you see here, this brown, is accumulation of the disease-associated prions within the organoids. Since we did this, organoid technology has actually improved immensely. And now we don't just make um, these organoids left, right, and center. We, we can make them correspond to different parts of the brain, which allows us to look at those different subtypes, those different shapes, and how they attack the different regions. And that is what we propose to do here. We're going to make these different parts of the brain organoids, and we're going to infect them with our different subtypes, our different shapes, and look at how the cells within those organoids are affected. The way we're going to look at the cells is to use a new technique or fairly new technique called single cell sequencing. What this does is it looks at the genes that are expressed within the organoids. So you are defined by your genes. It defines your hair color, your eye color. It's the same with the cells within the organoids. Their genes define them, which means we can identify them. And the readout we get looks a lot like this. Each dot is an individual cell. And this is kind of the family tree of cells. So that the cells that are most closely related, i.e. the same type grouped together, and the distant relatives are, say, over here. Once we've got this data, this allows us to look in detail at what's going on in this type of cell versus these types. And we can see how the different subtypes are affecting these populations differently or the same, or maybe not at all. And what we really hope that we will be able to pull out of this is the weaknesses that allow a subtype to say hit these cells and not these cells or both. And if we can define what those weaknesses are, ultimately, we really want to then try and intervene to prevent that weakness being targeted, stop the disease right at the very beginning, or um, find another way to intervene to stop those cells being damaged and eventually dying during the disease. And so I would like to thank all of you, the donors. Um, this work is incredibly complex, time consuming, and very, very expensive. And we honestly could not do it without your help. This grant really makes the difference between us being able to do it and not. So thank you ever so much. We really appreciate you.